Okay. Like all the regular goats. Or, hey, somebody's got their Michael. Uh, could you please mute it? Uh, a lot of background noise. Let me try that again. Yep, somebody still got it going. Okay. Like the Paul like is that me? Somebody probably has their T V on or the computer on with the delay. Yeah. All right, well, let's try to get going here. Uh, I'd like to call to order the regular village board meeting for the village of Shorewood on January the 12th in the year 2021. Uh, we'll forego the Pledge of Allegiance due to the situation that we're in. I don't mean country-wise, I mean technically, so... Uh, You know, does anybody recognize who that is that has their mic open? Uh, Trustee Anderson has it open. The chief has it open for sure. Okay. Chief's muted. Yeah, and I'm, uh, I'm I should be, well, okay. At any rate, uh, Diane, how about roll call, please? Mayor Chapman? Here. Dan Anderson? Here. Steve Brockman? Here. CC DeBolt? Here. Barb Kirkland? Here. Tony Luciano? Here. And Dan Warren? Here. Noriel, Jim, and Chief. Anybody uh, else there? Silverman. Yep. Let me make a record here. For the record, uh, there's a quorum. Village business can be done tonight. And uh, now, Diane, check for other people. Um, Copy here. Uh, Burkholder, yes? Yep, I'm here. Okay. Is that we it? Uh, John from Buildings is here. Okay. And how about Kelly? Is she out there? Yep, I'm here as well. All righty. I think we have everybody. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Uh, Happy New Year. Hope you all have a great 2021. Get everything you want. Uh, so, 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 so. Did anybody have any idea what that was? Am I still on? Yeah. Okay. I have no idea what that was. So, at any rate, let's move on to the uh, B section, the citizens. Are there any citizens on this meeting listening in that would like to speak to the village board? I'll give 30 seconds uh, for somebody to make sure that their, that their mic is open and uh, to announce themselves. So. 
okay, well, if you struggle getting in, uh, just break in on us at any moment. Let us know who you are and what you would like to talk about. Other than that, I'm going to move the meeting on to the consent agenda, which consists of approval of the regular meeting minutes for December the 8th. Also, approval of accounts payable in the amount of $869,971.63. Number three, approval of a payment in the amount of $44,431.30 to Ron Terrapelli Ford for a 2021 Ford Explorer. Number four, Approval of a payment in the amount of $62,022 in Metropolitan Industries for SCADA upgrades. And finally, number five, approval of a payment in the amount of $514,015.05 to or construction for work completed on the 2020 sewer rehab program. Are there any items that a trustee would like to remove for further review from the consent agenda? Or are there any questions on tonight's consent agenda? This is Trustee Luciano. Did we get minutes for the December 8th meeting? I didn't have them in my packet. Okay, Diane, were the minutes in for the December 8th meeting? Actually, I was on vacation, so Tony would have done those minutes. Okay, if you miss them, did everybody else get them in the packet? I got them. I did not. I do not. Okay, so uh, that was a miscue. So we'll remove the December 8th um, minutes, the approval of the December 8th minutes. Uh, from the consent agenda, and are there any other questions on the consent agenda? I make a motion to approve the consent agenda with uh, December 8th minutes admitted. Okay. Second. And there's a second. Uh, try to speak your names when you do uh, any motions uh, so that Diane can get them, please. That was Kirkland for the second. Okay. Uh, Anderson for the first. Okay. Uh, Diane, roll call, please. You with us, Diane? Mute. She's muted. Okay, Diane, on the mute, please. Anderson? Yes. Kirkland? Yes. Brock? Yes. We voting on the agenda or the uh, agenda there because I got kicked out. So is that what we're voting on? Yeah, yeah we're voting on the consent without the minutes. Uh, yes. Jackman? Yes. Hold. Yes. Luciano, yes. Diane, did you trip out again? Or? Yes, I've got Luciano. Uh, go through the roll, uh, roll again, will you, Diane? Anderson? Anderson, yes. Kirkland? Yes. Rockman? Yes. Yes. Warren? Yes. 
Yes. Okay. The consent agenda stands approved as amended. I'd like to move on. Well, I have no proclamations. Are there any communications to the village board? I Uh, yes, there's just one. Um, uh, CC DeVold would like to thank the um, board and the main staff for sending flowers. Uh, yeah, you're breaking up, Diane. Are, are, is, are you in an area where you're pretty clear? Um, I'm on my computer. Real, real quick, I'll chime in. The proclamation was uh, from me. I simply want to thank the board and all the village staff for the arrangement. Uh, my mother had just recently passed. So uh, family greatly appreciated the condolences. And it was just a simple thank you I sent out to all the staff and employees. So, again, thank you. Cece, sorry to hear that. Uh, my condolences. Uh, I really I missed the notification. I'm sorry. No problem. I had just sent out, uh, I had asked Tony to send out an all staff email. Uh, I just wanted to thank everybody. The appreciation was greatly noted. So again, just wanted to say thank you. Very good. And like I say, condolences from me and Cheryl. Uh, Okay, I have no proclamations. Uh, the only comments that I have on the report would be COVID still hanging in there, hanging around. Uh, our numbers uh, went are, are kind of leveling out, if not drifting down in the region uh, slightly. Chief, correct me on anything that, that I may err on. Uh, we also, uh, the governor looks like he's going to move us from tier three to tier two uh, by the end of the week. And uh, the chief and I have been in communication talking about what that means to us. Uh, he's really on top of this, always has been through it, him and Jim. And uh, what I'd like the chief to do right now is kind of give you a little bit of what that means to the village of Shorewood, because there's really not a major change, but he's going to give you a couple of key issues that you might be questioning about. Chief? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, as the mayor stated, the numbers have leveled off. Uh, roughly, we haven't been above 12%, which is the threat, the positivity threshold for a month. Our hospital beds have been below virtually for the last two weeks. Uh, we had a little bubble up, but uh, since the 27th or 28th of December, I think it was, was the last time that we were below the 20% threshold. So as indicated, the governor has stated that regions that meet the metrics will be able to transition on Friday the 15th um, from tier three, uh, to the applicable level to which their metrics indicate. Ours would only be to tier two. Uh, if you recall, in, in last month when we went into tier three mitigations, uh, there wasn't much of a change uh, for the bars and restaurants. In tier two, there were 11 bullet points for bars and six for restaurants. Both same bullet points were applicable in tier three. And uh, there were there were a few extra things. Those things were no seating of multiple parties at one table, no indoor gaming. As you recall, they actually shut door, down indoor gaming as well, and that this included private clubs and country clubs. So the mitigations relative to bars closing at 11, no indoor service, and those sorts of things that we've discussed ad nauseum are applicable in Tier 3 and in Tier 2. Therefore, on Friday, should we revert back to Tier 2, there is not much change for those businesses. Thanks. Thanks, Chief. Uh, I'd like to say one thing that I want everybody to be thinking about. Okay, we do know that these small businesses get hurt, and they're, they've been they've been hurt all for an entire year. Uh, it 
you know, the governor has put in mitigation uh, directives. Uh, we had to implement that ordinance uh, a few weeks back that would slow the activities of these types of places down. And if not, you know, uh, but nobody, nobody can come up with the exact numbers and where all these numbers are coming from, uh, how the spread of this disease is done. I mean, it, it makes sense that if you don't wear masks and you get close together and, and everybody's trying to out talk to the other person, which is what a, a nightclub and a bar does, okay? This is the areas where the transmission would be the greatest, but nobody's proven that. That you could transmit at, at houses where people are invited into your house and you could transmit the virus that way. So uh, I think we're going to watch these numbers over the next few days, especially this next week and prior to the next board meeting. And I'm going to be talking with the chief. We're going to be talking with uh, Jim. Uh, and we're going to be talking with Dave about how it looks because we may be trying to look at rescinding the, the ordinance that we put into place that closes our places at 11 o'clock, even though, and, you know, I may be requesting, let's give these people a little more of a break, especially if the numbers dictate it. So uh, right now, I just, uh, I, I wanted to put that out to everybody so that you could be thinking about it and talking about it to one another, that uh, we uh, we might move in that direction. Now, the other end of that is that if the numbers take off again due to anything that goes on and the numbers take off, or, or we get a super violent uh, end of January, not due to COVID, but due to other situations within the country, so at any rate, be thinking about that. Um, try to talk to a one-on-one, -on -one, okay, about that situation. And uh, are there any questions? Are there any comments? Okay. If not, I'd like to move on to our order of business tonight. Business item number one. Consideration for approval of an authorization to make grant payment number one in the amount of $99,209.34 to Charlie Cares Small Business Relief Program recipients. Uh, Kelly, would you like to comment on this issue? Yes, thank you, Mayor. Um, so, really quickly, I just want to give a brief update on the program. So, if you'll recall, the board approved the program about two months ago now. Since then, we have advertised the program, we have accepted applications, we have reviewed those applications and have been coordinating um, signatures on the grant agreements, as well as reimbursement requests. And so um, I have provided for you in the memo, just some kind of characteristics of those grantees. Um, of the 30 applications that we received, we have um, entered into or will be entering into uh, grant agreements with 22 businesses. We do have three applications still pending that we're working through some documentation, and then four that were not eligible with one that um, applied but didn't respond any further, so we couldn't confirm their eligibility. So in terms of the total grantees, we have the majority um, being accommodation and food services, so restaurants and bars. Um, the other services are approximately a quarter, which would be largely personal care, so nail and hair salons, for example. Um, and then uh, retail is also about another quarter as well. So kind of the, the usual or, or kind of what we would expect, I think, to see in terms of applicants. 
the applications and grantees. Um, as we look at those highly impacted industries, we see restaurants and bars, again, sort of make up the, the bulk of that with retail and personal care being the, the other two large categories there. Um, but as we looked at the age of the business for the grantees, we actually found that it was pretty well distributed between businesses that had been open in Shorewood from uh, up to five years, six to 10 years, 10 to 20 years, and, and even um, some that were open more than 20 years um, requiring assistance um, given the pandemic and the challenges that it's presented. And so um, we are still working through some of the grant agreements and reimbursement requests. But what we're presenting tonight is reimbursement for 14 grantees um, with a total of just under $100,000. And we are going to um, reach the full $10,000 grant maximum for seven of the grantees. The remaining grantees that have a balance due will continue to receive reimbursements. And so we plan to bring forward at subsequent board meetings additional reimbursements as we receive them in from the grantees. I'm happy to answer any questions anyone has. Uh, Bold, I, I have a question. Do we know how many businesses roughly were even eligible for this? Unfortunately, there's not a good way to estimate that because it is based on demonstrating a loss. Um, so I, I, I wouldn't know how to go about doing that without um, them submitting something for us to be able to evaluate. Okay, just, just curious as to how many were out there. Thank you. I can tell you that we've got approximately 450 businesses and the majority of those are small businesses. So um, unfortunately, outside of that, I'm not sure how, how else to narrow it down without getting additional information from them. That's fine, just trying to get a ballpark. That's fine, thank you. Mm -hmm. Callie, this is Kirkland. I just have, um, so one, assuming this gets approved tonight, when are they gonna get their money? Uh, I believe the checks will go out uh, this week. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. If there if there are no further questions, I would in, in, I'd entertain a motion to approve the authorization to make the grant payments. Number one. I'll make the motion to approve the grant payment for sure. We cares. Second, Kirkland. Okay, Diane, roll call, please. Kirkland? Yes. Brockman? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Bold? Yes. Warren? Yes. Luciano. Yes. Genetic number one stands approved. Uh, keep your mic open, uh, Kelly. Uh, agenda item number two. Consideration for approval of a resolution accepting a grant of easement to the village of Shortwood, Bill County, Illinois, at 301 Gregory Court. This is Rhino Baseball. Thank you, Mayor. So this is being brought forward to um, accept the public utility easement that is being um, offered by Rhino Baseball at 301 Gregory Court. When they were uh, during construction, they had discovered that there were already uh, village electrical lines for the uh, street lights and that were running along the east property line. And so Rhino Baseball is granting the village an eight foot easement along the east property line for us to be able to have access to and maintain those existing utilities. Happy to answer any questions anyone has. Okay, if there are 
questions, uh, I would entertain a motion to uh, approve a resolution accepting the grant of easement for those in Shorewood, Will County. I make the motion to accept the grant of easement for uh, 301 Gregory Court. Second, good morning. Okay, Diane, roll call, please. Luciano? Yes. Warren? Yes. DeBold? Yes. Perkin? Yes. Rockman? Yes. And Anderson? Yes. Uh, the resolution accepting the grant of easement at 301 Gregory Court has been approved. Moving on to agenda item number three, consideration for approval of a rebate payment in the amount of $28,037.86 to shoot point blank. Uh, and if you're out there, would you please explain this one, please? I will. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this is the first payment due to shoot point blank for the TIF incentive agreement as was approved back in 2018. Um, they are rebated 100% of the property taxes that were paid into the TIF. So it's not the entirety of their property tax bill, but it is the entirety of the amount that went into the TIF. And that is $28,037.86. I'm happy to take any questions if, if anybody has any. Okay, if there are no further questions. Hey, this, uh, I'm sorry, this is the first one we've uh, issued back, right? Yeah, that's correct. All right. Make a motion to approve the repayment of taxes, $28,37.86 to shoot point plate to Sanderson. The bowl the second. Donald second. Okay, um, Diane, roll call. Luciano? Yes. Warren? Yes. Bold? Yes. Kirkland? Yes. Hockman? Yes. And Anderson? Rusty, are you there? Are you looking for me? Yes. Oh, yes. Sorry, I'm having troubles out here. Yeah, it was a motion to approve. I didn't. I missed it. Yeah, a motion to approve the the uh, payment in the tip. Yes. Who should go and blank? Okay. And, yes, I. My answer is yes. Thanks. Okay. Uh, Gen item number three has been approved. Moving on to number four, consideration for approval of the design for tennis, pickleball, and basketball courts refur refurbishment project at Seedings Four Seasons Park and authorization, authorization to bid. Uh, Noriel. Can you hear me? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, what you have before you are the 90% 90, 90 uh, complete design plans for the pickleball, tennis, basketball refurbishment over at Seniors Four Seasons Park. The, if you recall, this project was actually put on hold earlier this year uh, because of the pandemic as budget uh, uh, looked favorable later in the year. And September, we were able to make a recommendation uh, to you to proceed with uh, the design with the intent that we would complete design by the early part of uh, 2021 and uh, approval to go to bid in this January, February timeframe. Uh, we organized a meeting with the local pickleball enthusiasts. They made and provided us a lot of suggestions on the project. We, we were able to incorporate most of their suggestions. Uh, some of the uh, ideas that they would that they had requested, of course, is the 
you know, a little bit more room along the court, interior four foot fencing to help with prevent uh, interference from other courts, uh, different access points, uh, windscreening, and such. So with that attached for your review is the final uh, design for the pickleball. Uh, it includes four courts. Uh, it also includes uh, the basketball court repainting, also the resurfacing of the tennis courts and a possible alternate bid for a future shelter. There are the base bid or the base cost estimate for the project for the pickleball is 206,000. The estimated uh, painting of the basketball courts is 200 uh, is uh, 15,000 to bring the total to 221,000. The resurfacing of the tennis courts is approximately estimated at 64,000 bringing the total to 285,000. Uh, we are also going to be seeking uh, resident participation in an online poll uh, to help choose the color schematic, the color scheme of our basketball court to get some public uh, involvement. We hope that that brings attention and positive uh, involvement from our residents in you know, the selection of the colors. So right now we have, uh, you know, again, the, the request before you is uh, uh, we're seeking approval of the project scope and the authorization to bid. We intend to um, bid at the end of January, beginning of February. If the bids are accepted are um, good, we would like to, of course, it'll go in front of the village board for your approval for award of the contract. And we're gonna be on schedule to construct in uh, late March, early April. I'm available for any questions. Noriel Brockman here. Um, <clears throat> You, do you have off the top of your head what uh, Hitchcock is, what their what their price was? Do you remember that number or have it for the design? Uh, their design cost is just under $11,000, which includes an amendment when we revised the scope late in the year when we were restarting the project. All right, I thank you very much. Uh, any of any more questions on this? Uh, if you know, if not, I'd like to thank the ladies over there at Trowe Glen. Two years ago, they brought this to my attention. Uh, that pickleball, which at the time, to tell you the truth, I had no idea what it was. Okay, and uh, they had brought that to my attention. We had gone over there and actually played a game, and I found it to be pretty damn entertaining, if not wearing on the body, too, which is great. So the seniors that are involved, especially from Troy Glenn, were the ones that really initiated this, this effort. And I thank the board. I thank our staff for getting us to the position we are today, and that I hope that these people out of Shore Glen, especially the, the, the pickleball enthusiasts, uh, get a lot of entertainment out of that for all the summers coming up. So it's a good thing. And thank you, Noriel, for steering this uh, effort. Thank you. Any, any questions or comments? So I just, I just want to confirm. So we're going to tr possibly approve the 285, 285,000, because we budgeted 275, right? So do we think it's coming under budget? We are requesting approval of the project scope and authorization to bid. We will still, after we receive the bids, um, we will be presenting. Hopefully it'll come in a little bit better. Uh, but we will be presenting to you at the next uh, after bid at the first available board meeting, the uh, bid award and contract at such when we have that final number. Right now we are estimating the project that includes the pickleball courts, basketball, the tennis courts is at 285,000. Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah, I get it. I misread it. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, I need a motion to approve approval of the design. Mr. Bold to make a motion. Somebody, I'm sorry, we don't want to talk over somebody. Go ahead. The bolt yeah. on board make a motion to approve the design and authorization to bid. We need a second. I'll second. Man. Okay, Diane, roll call, please. Anderson. Anderson? Yes. Brockman? Yes. Yes. Bold? Yes. Warren? Yes. Luciano? Yes. Okay, approval has been granted. Uh, for the design of the tennis and pickleball basketball courts uh, and the authorization to go to bed. Uh, moving on to our final business item, consideration for approval of a payment in the amount of $100 to Anderson Fulham. To bold motion to pay the bill. One second. For one second. Okay. Uh, Diane, roll call, please. Kirkland? Yes. Brockman? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Devol? Warren? Yes. And Luciano? Yes. Okay, agenda number five has been approved. Moving on to reports, Trustee Anderson, Public Works. All uh, right, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Hope we can get through this. I'm, I keep getting really a lot of cut, cutting out out here, but here we go. Um, we had a couple, uh, four snow events just before Christmas, and then right after the New Year, we had uh, a couple snow and then the sleet and ice. Our guys were out on that. Uh, the quick things that have been going on, we've had some tree, pr uh, tree pruning, fields of shorewood, river road, Sile road, and Burton, uh, estates of Hidden Creek. Uh, and there's been a few miscellaneous locations where customers or where uh, residents have called in. Um, the SCADA upgrades are completed, as you could see on the bill sheet earlier in the meeting. Those are all completed. We're 100% on our cell, cell towers or cell system now instead of two-way radios. Um, there was a water line, water line uh, leaking at uh, Whisper Lane in Oakwood a couple uh, weeks ago, and today we had a water main at 607 Park Shore uh, that included a boil order for uh, 24 to 48 hours. We should have uh, clearance on the water to not boil any longer sometime tomorrow afternoon at the earliest. Um, there is also some tree trimming that's gonna be coming up here in January and February for Commonwealth Edison. And this is in areas that have uh, overhead power lines and it's the uh, Amon Dodge. Oakwood Manor, Shorewood Park, and Sunset Hills area. Um, and they'll be doing that, like I said, January, February, and that is all I have for right now. Okay, any questions for Trustee Anderson? If not, moving on, Trustee Brockman, Planning and Zoning Committee. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, we did not have a January meeting so our next meeting will be February 3rd, and uh, really too early for an agenda at this point. And uh, that's my report. Thank you. Okay, and again, happy birthday. Oh. I appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Uh, 
Any questions for Trustee Brackman? If not, I move on. Trustee Kirkland, Parks and Recreation. Thank you. Priority registration for the community garden will be mailed to the participants from 2020. The Spring Village newsletter will be out about the middle of next month. Digital copies will be available on the Village website. And be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to the Village Facebook, Instagram, and Constant Contact for Village updates and news about special events and programming. That's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any any questions for Trustee Kirk? If not, Trustee Luciano, Citizens Advisory. Uh, the Citizens Advisory Committee will be meeting January 28th at 7 p.m. on the second floor in the uh, Village Hall, uh, provided the circumstances are available with the virus. Uh, when we send out the minutes, we'll determine exactly how the meeting will be uh, held. I'll have to check with the village manager to see if we can meet like we did before in the meeting room or if we're going to have to figure out a different way to do it. So, um, as always, if anyone's interested in getting involved, if they can uh, look on the village website to contact one of the members or myself, it would be appreciated. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, anything for the good of the whole? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Kirkland moves. The bold second. Okay, Diane, roll call, please. DeBold? Yes. Warren? Yes. Luciano? Yes. Kirkland? Yes. Brockman? Yes. And Anderson? Yes. We stand adjourned. Uh, close the mics. <laughs>